Hey, how's it going? Um, it's been a long time since I last posted my videos on uh, on YouTube and uh, shared lots of well shared anything I've done in the past. Um, I've been busy uh, from December I think till end of March. So I had a I had a contract I had to finish. The contract was meant to take four weeks. It took it well, well, a lot longer, but that's all done. And uh, I think April, uh, sorry, March, I had a couple of visits to the premises and also a, a, a kind of a, an enjoyment thing, holiday for a couple of weeks and, and I came back. So anyway, um, I'm still alive. I'm still doing stuff. Since April, I did a lot of work on the instrument and the Kronos, uh, trying to do as much as I can. Uh, but obviously things keep popping up. Uh, <laughs> Husband and father, you know the same the same thing. Uh, so yeah, I mean it's 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 been a quite quite a, an interesting uh, journey so far. Um, I one thing to clarify, I don't. Uh, you know, people are asking me a lot about when am I supposed to finish all this. Um, to be honest with you, I I don't know. Uh, the main thing is, I is this something I personally started. And it's personally, you know, funded. Uh, no one is paying me for any any of this. No one is doing, is helping or doing anything to make me go faster. So I'm afraid you're gonna have to wait until I come up with new stuff uh, over time. Uh, and this is this is literally the uh, the issue I have. I, I can't split myself into many things. I mean, I'm I'm doing things, uh, you know, work streams and stuff, which will I'll I'll discuss in a minute. Um, and that's that's that. So I just wanted to clarify this bit. Um, the other bit is um, I think uh, by the end of this video, uh, probably Korg will hate me if they don't hate me already. So this is. Uh, but anyway, having said that, I just wanted to um, I just wanted to expl uh, well, clarify one thing that anything I've done or uh, or doing in this video or about to do. Is pretty much on the operating system, uh, which is a, an open source. It's not working on. Um, I'm not working on the the files or hacking the files or modifying the files in in, in any way. I might be doing something to understand them. It's a different, but um, the work I'm doing, which I'm about to show you, is literally on the instrument. Sorry, on the uh, on the operating system, which is an open source. And Korg did provide the open source on their on the Kronos DVD. Um, so that's pretty much the area I'm actually working on, um, and if uh, if things I'm doing now kind of uh, you know they're not really happy about what what can I do? Uh, this is an open source system, which is a public thing available to everyone. Anyway, so that said, just clarified this logistic bit out of the way and uh, doing a little catching up. So I'm gonna power up the instrument now and then show you take things from there. So without further ado, let's just power things up. And then take it from there. So let's see how that's going to go. I also got a brand new uh, 4K camera uh, to do this side here or this this bit. And um, I think the reason I got this is pe you know some people complain that they they can't read the text very well. So hopefully with this camera. Once I capture the images and stuff, I can zoom in, or at least just do stuff to to you know make things clearer or to 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 to, to read and understand. So, um, looking at the display, uh, I'm gonna keep looking this way because this is my display. I'm actually can check check the results with the camera behind me. The annoying part of the camera is it'll keep just doing auto focusing, and I don't like it. Um, but it's that's the, uh, one thing, and the other bit is. The camera uh, has got a limit on the video. I don't know why. I haven't looked at the settings yet. I might need to hack that too. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, you know change the display. There goes zoom auto focus again. I just don't like it, but that's fine. And uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna change that later on um, and see how that's gonna go. Uh, so yeah, let's just uh, without further ado, let's just see where we are now. Hopefully we are recording. So yeah, we've done five minutes. Just gonna stop and record. Yeah. Okay. So let's log in. 
Okay. So now we're working on to this bit. If you remember last time we did power up the instrument this way and we're just powering up the whole lot. But what you haven't checked or you haven't seen is there is a there's a more login information I'm actually doing on the screen now. And um, it, interestingly enough, uh, and this is why I don't think, you know, Coral will like me for this because I'm actually telling the operating system, if A wants to talk to B, I want to know about it. Uh, tell me on the screen. If uh, device A is doing something, I want to know about it. If USB is being pulled to do stuff, I want to know about it. All, all that kind of stuff. I'm just logging here on the screen. So you'll see things like, for example, the RT request SRQ down up there. You got the um, the uh, RTI task in, in, in it, and you got the, the, all the task numbers displayed. So uh, I might have touched on that in the last video, but to be honest with you, on this section, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a lot on uh, the, the logging side, just to understand the instrument more. For example, in here, the RT types uh, type sim image, uh, you know, in it, sorry, is, is all uh, showing up and I can see all the semaphores and the task and all the rest of it. Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit on the task and semaphores in, in, in a second. I just wanted to wait for that to load up and, and, and take it from there. So, right now, you can see, uh, as I said, I'm logging things down. I'm, you know, I'm looking at the the, the, the the real time in it for the, all the semaphores. Uh, it may not make sense what semaphores are, but um, I'll explain that, touch that briefly on this. I'm, I'm probably going to do another video on tasks and semaphores on Linux, and uh, we'll we'll explain in, in full details what you know what everything does. But for now, in demons terms, what what's a task? A task is a uh, you, you basically tell someone, I here's a a red green kind of sign. Stand in the middle of the or well, at the end of the road, and then uh, well, the middle of the road, and then switch this to red to prevent people from coming in because we're doing lots of building work, and press to green to allow traffic in. So you got the road controlled by one person going back and forth. That's a task. You just assign a task to someone. It's really simple, but. It gets more complicated when a task, uh, when you have more than one task, and these trying to synchronize between each other. So, say the same the same example, where you have a really long road, and you got two people instead of one, one standing at each end of the road, each one holding the sign. Now, it well, they they can obviously flip the sign back and forth to allow cars and you know this way or that way, and the road can only take one one, one direction. Now. Imagine if uh, both of them say in green and the both car goes in, they, they, they're going to collide and it's going to you know, end up in a, in, a, in a problem. The solution is to come up with something called a semaphore, which is a, a kind of a synchronization way to, or synchronized way to let the people or the task who are doing the job not kind of, or, you know, step on each other's toes. And what that means is um, a semaphore basically is a number. Uh, usually, they, you know, have different types. So one of them will will allow more than one people to well, more than one person to to do stuff. Or is, is the general stuff would be just uh, one number to 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 decrement. What that means in English is, if this guy flips the sign to green to allow people in, then he's gonna tell the other guy, "I'm oh, actually don't hold, don't." don't don't switch this to green. Uh, I've actually subtracted the number, uh, so I'm actually using that number. So I've taken it off with me. So you subtract the number, you're taking it with you. So the other guy have to wait until you finish. Once you finish, you flip it to red, and then you put the number back. So the other guys take the number and then do do it this way. So the minute that number is missing, no other task can enter the um, the, the that, that that room, and that's called a semaphore. So semaphore is a synchronization uh, to synchronize between uh, the, the different tasks. Obviously, um, semaphores can, uh, you know, be more than allow more than one one task to execute. For example, you have a task that says, um, you know, do do this road, and another task that actually do the pedestrian as well, and they don't they work in parallel, but they don't cross each other. That sort of thing is a more complicated thing. But anyway, to go back into this example, the Kronos has got five tasks. Um, Task one, two, and three—they are uh, pretty much to check stuff on what the I/O come, comes up. I think task one 
is a uh, does things more does more processing, which I, I don't think I'm interested in. Uh, task two and three are the ones who are kind of checking at the I/O to say yes, do I have an I/O? Yeah, all right, then fine, and label the other, the, the other task to go through. Task five is pretty much where uh, everything is, is 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 happening on the on the on the global side. So what that means is. Um, task five will be the one handling the uh, the audio, handling the MIDI. Uh, a lot of things happening in the background. Just checking the uh, the you know the real time. You can see that here the RTF zero one two three four and five and, and so on. So it's doing that kind of checks and stuff, and uh, allows uh, basically whenever if that task is enabled and, and it's looping up, it'll actually pick up the interfaces, understand uh, I've got something in the queue, I'm going to process it get back and then power things up and then move on th th this way. But if that task is not allowed to run uh, because the semaphore has been locked by someone else, it will it will just basically sit down doing nothing, uh, which is which was the problem we had in the past. So in the past I actually, um, what's the right thing to say? I uh, intentionally went and picked up the job that it's meant to do and I, and I fired it across to the RTF1 and with that, it, it enabled the uh, the EVA to start. So, um, EVA currently I haven't powered it up yet, but I'll, I'll, you can see that now. I don't know if you can see the screen, but this is uh, the red going halfway through to, to the work. So basically, we know the OA or the Oasis, uh, the modules are all loaded up nicely here. So that's that's all looking good so far. Um, the task number four uh, is an interesting task. It's basically it will um, initially wake up, check itself up, and then goes immediately to, 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 to sleep. So task four and five, they pretty much are waiting for stuff to happen. And usually task one, two, and three is, are the only culprits left. So task one, I checked it out. There's nothing, you know, not, not an awful lot happening in there. So task two and three are the ones that's got a, imagine they allowed the car to go in and the car crashed inside something or, or somewhere. And that one cannot really tell the others to continue working because it's actually keep holding the numbers and its own task is not finished yet. That's where the problem is. Now, in this example, I will uh, kind of do something unlike what I've done in the past to, to show you that this whole thing can power up, but in, in a different way. Uh, I'll explain that in a minute. So the other bit is, and this is why uh, I think Korg will hate me, hate me for this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is uh, you can see the communication I'm actually dumping in on on the screen. So take a look at this. For example, RTF five is receiving things like this. Is, you know, receiving the 32 bytes data, and uh, it got zero zero. Sorry, tw twenty zero zero, which means uh, the this is the, the the first packet of the the first two bytes of the packet called a word. 0020 is a hex code, uh, so it, it actually equivalent to 32. So that 32 is the same as this 20 hex, which is 32, and the rest is just the packet data. And and and, and it, it, you don't have to you know understand what that says, but I kind of looked into most of it and and, 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 and got a, got got a nice idea. So usually, uh, what happens after you power up the the OA the OASIS and, and stuff all all, all the modules? you would, uh, or the system would actually run this Korog EVA uh, module. <clears throat> so now, when the EVA is going to power up, you see the light here, the, the, the red, sorry, the, the hard disk light flashed a bit. That moved a little bit more, the, uh, the, the slider, so the red is now is no longer stopping at the R, it's stopping at the K. So now, that thing slightly shifted forward, and you got a lot of things happening now. So you got things to say, you know, RTF zero receive this, uh, RTF zero receive that, that sort of thing. It's kind of waiting for something. So uh, e e e sorry, the EVA bit is now waiting, and you've probably seen this in the last video. You know, it's it's uh, I, I did show this last, but I didn't show how the details of the communication is happening so far. So so far here we are pretty much at the same stage we were on last time. Last time I taken the the job that the task is meant to send and I send it manually and that continued the power up and you got the screen you know came up and the whole thing just went dead and the reason it went dead because actually the oasis or the tasks uh, or the OA here uh, task number five 
is still locked waiting for something. That's why it's not going to loop up and, and, and pick up the thing and power up the UI and do all the rest of it. So I've actually developed stuff. So if I inst uh, mod uh, hide a C R tie. Okay. So what I'm doing right now, I'm going to give task 4 a kick in the butt that says, I don't care, wake up, power up, just carry on doing what, you know, what you're meant to do. So task 4 in this sense is, um, so you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so task 4, 5, 9, C, 8, A, 2, 40. So 5, 9, C, 8, A, 2, 4, 0. So if I power this up, notice, keep an eye on the screen, you'll see, so that... It, it waited for a bit and nothing happened, but it did wait to try to do something. Try and kick again, and then one more time. I'm just forcing it to, just a second, 59C8, A240, is that the right task? It should be, 59C8. A240, yeah, that's the right one. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, let's try again. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there we go. So after I give it a multiple kicks in the butt, it then uh, displayed something on the screen. See that now? This is what's happening. Uh, task number four wake up and said yeah okay I'm fine I'm, I'm not gonna wake up and carry on doing what I what I meant to do however uh, it did send the stuff you can see keep an eye on the light in here so the light is now powering up the this you will not see because what happened now look at that the screen the communication between the uh, OMAP uh, NKS4 and the video and the OA has, has gone broken something went down the line that says uh, sorry uh, Lost synchronization. I can't really do something. But anyway, EVA will say actually, yeah, I've, I've got I've got the signal, which means task four. When when we when we give it a kick in the butt, it 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 continued the stuff. Task five woke up and then picked up. Yeah, well, I got I got a job. EVA is trying to start up and it's not started yet. So yeah, here we go. Here's the code and EVA now is picking up things and and, and it's moving on. So you can see that now. Uh, but the, the issue on the screen in here is very clear that there's something wrong between the OMAP talking to the video and both of them talking to the USB. That is a, um, this is basically to do with uh, synchronization and also uh, the interrupt coming back. Uh, probably, uh, I, I said this before, something called the cookie, well, the cookie cutter is not the same size as the cookie that is being sent or received. And that's why this whole thing is, 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 is being confused. So that so far, you can see now that's this is going to carry on. Uh, so it's just going to add some spaces in here just to, uh, you know, carry on from that side. Let's see how much time we have left. Uh, yeah, we've got 13 minutes. I'm going to break the video and then redo it because of that 15 minutes. And then again. Yeah, there we go. All right, so so now you can see no no free URBs. I mean, we know we have free URBs. You know, this instrument has not really done much URBs anyway. So U URB is basically is a, a USB request block, which means basically I have data. It's, it's in simple as that. Well. So now you can see things are powering up, trying to power up. It's not going to power up, it's, you know, unlike the last video I showed you. It's not going to come up with a screen, displays, and everything until I. I do something else in a minute but I just wanted to talk about what's what's happening on, on on that front so now you can see the light has now gone off and you'll see in a minute uh, it'll flicker again it's, it's trying to do something and yeah there we go flickered again and then you'll see uh, something happening on the real time there you go so RTF5 got some data and then RTF3 and then 0 got some data also again waiting trying to enter a loop that sort of thing. So the instrument inside, the Oasis, has powered up uh, but then died again. And the, the, uh, the EVA is not, um, you know, is kind of 
in, in a pending state, wait, waiting for OA to come back. So yes, here we go. So that is so far. It's not really, and you know, may may not be really interesting news, or you know, may maybe yeah, whatever. What what's what's this guy doing? So this is all this is all okay. But if I reboot the instrument, and I'll and I'll start this, you know, something else, and you'll see now. The other stream I actually worked on, uh, it'll all make sense. I'm just going to reboot the instance from a hardware perspective. So now everything is down, everything is up. And it's, I promise you, it's going to get more interesting. Sorry, I had a call. Uh, I. Okay, so it's gonna get interesting now. Uh, you'll see. <laughs> right. So I'm doing the same thing, but I'm doing it differently slightly. You'll see in a minute. Well, the instrument is powering up a little faster. Okay, no worries. This time, I've done something. I've executed a script before I've done the other scripts, which is the HSR, uh, uh, SI. Um, it's just a little thing on top that says, uh, it's adding a little bit to that synchronization part. So this is something that will will change how this timing whole thing working. So if I now run the same thing like I did before and the watch this time, it's not going to stop and it's going to continue running. There. So now you got the two keys. Uh, so RTF1 is receiving. The hard disk is now continuing to power up and it looks like it's going to have a happy ending. And uh, so that now is, uh, you know, going the way I was hoping to, well, uh, I, I wanted wanted it to go in the first place. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's going to get interesting, I promise you. Uh, this is the part uh, I, I had to spend a long time working on this. So now, wait until this whole thing is, is, is finished uploading. So now I can see the slider is going to the, you know, it's coming up. You know, as you can see, it's all the same logging stuff, the same things happening in the background, the same communication. But notice now, once the once the synchronization and the in the semaphores are all you know singing and dancing nicely, watch what's going to happen on the screen. You're going to get a lot of information now in a minute, uh, or a few seconds, once this whole thing is powered up, and all the instruments going to all the lights. There we go. So see that you know the data is coming up. You know things are coming up. The lights are powering up. The whole thing is, uh, you know, coming to life now, which is a, uh, a happy, a happy ending moment. <laughs> so there we go. So now you have the instrument powered up and everything, and you got a lot of things happening. But then you're looking at this, thinking, yeah, okay, we we have an instrument that can power up. So what? Here is here is the. Uh, the nice, the nice bit that I'm about to show you now. And um, why did I do all this? Is to get to that stage to understand what's happening in the background. When everything talk to each other, I want to know about it. And I now, uh, you can see clearly on the screen, if A is talking to B, uh, I'm actually logging it down. So that helps me later on if I wanted to come up with another thing to, to, to well, I'm not going to talk about it. Let's just show you in, 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 in this as an example. How much time we have? Yeah, that's good. All right. So, um, right now, um, you know, all that stuff is, is happening. The instrument is powered up. You think, you know, nothing, nothing is different, but anything I press now, because of this thing I actually installed, is going to be logged on the screen. I'll start with this one. Tempo. If I give a tempo, if I rotate it a little bit, you know, just rotating, so that's the minimal and uh, if I go to the maximum 
so I'm rotating, there we go. Buttons, let's press the exit. So if I hold the exit key, 7F means button is pressed, release is comes to zero, the button is, the code is here coming up, so button zero. So the difference now you can see, so that one is number five, the minus, the zero is number six, the exit is number two, the dot is number four. So now, if I wanted, for example, how the system knows that you're pressing, for example, shift and enter to do something, it'll actually, let's just skip this up, it'll actually, for example, I wanted to exit and minus together, so you press the exit, so now the system knows exit is down, it hasn't come up again because it's still on 7F there. And if I press that minus, so now both of them are being held down, 7F and 7F. And if I release the uh, the exit key, this, the exit now released, now it's gone back to zero. And if I release that bit, so now this is how the system knows that the, the, the keys are being pressed. So if I, for example, wanted to press four keys, so one, two, three, four, and then release, right? Or one, two, three, sorry, release, yeah. It actually does that. So that keyboard, one, two, three, and then release three, two, one. Uh, you can see that now being dumped on the screen. Not just that, if I wanted to, for example, do a, you know, the panning on that side, if I wanted to do the EQ, EQ that sort of thing, if I wanted to change this, whatever slider that does, and, or that one, uh, you know, if I wanted to, you know, press this button, don't know what that does. Anyway, so now you can see it's back, back in the middle. All that so far is, uh, let's just, uh, yeah, that's fine, exit, good. So now we're in a stable position. Okay, so now you can see that the instrument is kind of logging up everything that we are asking to do. So anything you press is gonna be logged up and I can now, I'm, I'm in the middle of the communication or sitting in, in the middle, man in the middle attack. <laughs> To understand, uh, you know, A is talking to B saying what, and you can see on the screen uh, that, that that sort of thing. Yeah, what, what does that all, all mean? Um, so if I jump into more things, I can now not just read it, I can actually tell it what to do. So for example, I'm going to press the program button. And notice here the program, the screen is actually loading it slowly because every because it, it anything it's trying to do is being logged on the screen and the screen is, is considered as a, a slow device, that, that, that display. So... If you look at this here, the tempo, for example, uh, it says 124. Let me start my iPhone and record this, because this is going to be interesting. So if I go to video mode, and uh, so I'm just going to record this using the iPhone. So now the iPhone is recording. And here, if you look at that thing, um, so you can see that now the tempo is 124. If I go into my keyboard, uh, so just typing that in. Right. Tempo. Let's go up. So now I have a, a little script that would have a, an up tempo. Before I press the enter key, the tempo now is 124. If I go and press enter, in a, in a second, let's just do it that, that, let's just do it that, this. So if I'm going to press enter here, notice the key enter. Now the tempo has jumped to 300. And you can see that now, actually manually told the system what to do. And if I do this again, but this time I'm going to go tempo uh, down. This time I'm going to record the whole thing, including my action. Uh, it's just slightly slipping back like this. And if I'm about to press enter, there. So now the tempo has gone down to the minimum, which is 40. I can even push it up to even lower than that. Um, so now, this is what I'm trying to say. Um, I can now uh, read and write into the uh, interfaces. And uh, that gives me a chance to do the changes that I asked about 10 years ago. So, um, just going back in history, uh, I don't know, does this video remind you of something? I, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm going back to my uh, hack that I've done 10 years ago, which is Kronos Hack 1. 
I kind of touched on that and I was doing something similar then but then I got put off and I just didn't want to continue this and I just decided to, to ignore it or, 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 or you know totally uh, I, I, I thought yeah, it's just a waste of time then um, initially uh, just going back to, 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 to that sort of thing uh, this now allows me because I now understand the whole thing, I just left the whole thing for nearly nine, nine or even ten years, and I came back to it a year ago to carry on on this project because I like to do, I like to understand, you know, more about the OMAP and the PCs and and how the communication is happening and all that kind of stuff. Which is, you know, it was nice to, to kind of either come up with an update or even make a, any other instrument if I wanted to later on. Well, who knows? But now. Uh, you can see the communication coming up. The question is, and here is the interesting part, if you know, like I do now, um, how what the PC is telling the devices, or the OMAP, or what anything that's talking inside to, to, to the inside, would you still keep the PC in, in, in that hood uh, down there, knowing that this the fan speed and the fan stuff is just kind of a, uh, a nightmare to, to, to listen to in a quiet room? Um, I mean, to be honest with you, given the level of that stuff, because I can now remotely send the commands to say, give the tempo up, or the tempo down, or change the screen, or do something else, uh, I now can, uh, I, I can use an iPad to actually do, to do this whole thing, or even use another OMAP altogether to have two OMAPs talking to each other and, and, and kind of doing this whole thing powered up. There are, there are things, don't remember, there are things that you can't really replace. I mean, the OA, uh, Forget the um, the NKS4 and the video module. These are just uh, you know salt and pepper. But the OA itself is where all the processing is happening. There's a lot of things going on in the OA. You know to open up the hood on the OA is a lot of things going on. Things like uh, you know audio management and uh, you know tuning and panning and all that kind of stuff is happening all there. And then that whole thing is being cooked and then sent to the OMAP for for more uh, to, for, oh, for 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 voice output and all that kind of stuff but the the EVA also just to let you know the EVA is, a, is the screens and, 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 and how the screens are interacting and how this thing holding put together um, thing I don't like for example if uh, you know if you if your screens rather than loading them up on the on and every time you power up the instrument why not having them stored in, a, in an EEPROM somewhere or, or a flash memory somewhere where it's ready to go and then the only time you need to load up these or change these screens when you do a firmware update that makes more sense because at the end of the day it frees up the time and makes the instrument really power up faster which is something you know being in in in, in most of these core devices for a long time or even the latest one they've done this one is discontinued they've done the latest one um i don't know what's it called uh the latest one does exactly the same waiting time so you power up the instrument and you, you know, go you know, cook eggs or have tea and do all, 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 all the stuff and then come back and yeah, maybe it's powered up yet. So yeah, I mean, that is a, these are the, the things I've actually come up with so far. These are the work streams. Oh. Is that the battery died or what happened? I heard the beep there. It looks like the battery died. Okay. Anyway, I think, um, We'll continue on this video now. So it looks like that camera behind me. Recording stopped because the camera is busy. Yeah, why? Yeah, now <laughs> recording again. So yeah, that's fine. So now we're putting it back. Yeah, so now to be honest, um, as you can see, I have done a lot of things. And uh, the other streams I'm actually working on is on the PC, which I'm about to show you now in a minute. Uh, so that will, will will explain what's happening on the uh, on the uh, on, my, on my MacBook in a minute. I'll, I'll show you that very very soon. And um, I, I I don't want to modify the files myself manually. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're talking about copyright and stuff, I, why would I change the file myself? But if I design a general application or general app or general something that you can take away and load it up, and it will change the the files or patch things up and then run in memory rather than just modifying the files themselves then you know we, we achieve that 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 that, that sorry that task and what that means is uh, you can do with the 
ideas that we, we, we can actually come up with, we can find out what the wish list are, uh, implement it on, a, on, a, on another module, call it, uh, and then push that out. And then this is how new changes and or new updates can come to the instrument. Uh, I'd rather not touch the existing one. Uh, you know, obviously to avoid to keep your warranty up and running, even though the the whole line of instrument is expired anyway. But in case I decide to do something later on in future, this is what's going to happen. Um, you know, so I hope that kind of makes sense. Uh, again, I, I, I've got a lot of things coming up, a lot of things to do. I'm not really, a, you know, not dedicated for this work. So this work will, I'll probably park this work for now um, and then resume it maybe back in, maybe in August or something, because I'm actually working on something else at the moment. Uh, about to start another project for another four weeks. Who knows how long that's going to take. I've got a wedding to go uh, for my best friend uh, abroad and I'm going to attend that with the family hopefully uh, and to be honest with you I really want to get back on the OMAP side and to un analyze more on the OMAP bit because I've started the OMAP videos which are very very nice uh, at least something I'm actually learning more on, on that on that front and actually my my idea is to kind of come up and generate some some audio and, and, and do stuff the OMAP is actually behind me in, in, in that uh, and that stuff over there. So uh, I'm going to talk you down to the Chronos. Sorry, to the um, to the uh, to my MacBook in this in a minute, and I'll show you what's happening on that side, just to show you the application actually wrote down that will modify this whole thing. So rather than um, sending a modifying file, modified files, we have a call it a patcher that would uh, or how am I debugging stuff like like that? I actually run this thing, it will look into every single function. Uh, the file is made of loads of functions. It will actually push these functions down to make to make gaps between them and then f inject my code in there. And then it will log everything down the way I want it to or change the functionality altogether. So that is something happening at the moment. And uh, I've, I've actually done it and I should really should do a video on it at some point, which is a uh, how to hack Linux modules in general. It's something to do with the Kronos. But I've actually written down something I don't think has been done before, or I'd like to think it's not been done before. Anyway, I talk too much. Sorry about this. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's lovely to see you and hear from you. Uh, really appreciate the comments and uh, you know liking the video, these videos. Um, again, I don't have any fund uh, towards what I'm doing, so you know. The time it'll take whatever it takes, uh, as as long as it's something makes me happy. Um, if you want to speed up the process, then we, we might, maybe can throw in some ideas and we can discuss and see what 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 what, what can be done or you know if I don't know. Right now, this is it. Uh, so now we have a working instrument, and uh, I think I'm gonna stop digging on the PC section side now because it's no point anymore. I know how this whole thing works. And I and I really dug so much on the the um, the stuff the OA the EVA that, that kind of thing. I actually learned so much from it that I don't think I should really spend more time to analyze further into this. Uh, it's, it's no point. I, I now reached that that goal, which is getting the communication dumped between the two devices. Now I can, as I said, uh, work on the other side or work on on a different device altogether, and then to power this whole thing up because obviously. That's a that's a thirty two bit. Oh, the this other stream I'm I'm, I'm about to, to talk to you soon about. Oh, there's another thing going on. Uh, is kind of moving this whole thing from a thirty two bit into a sixty four bit platform. And to do that, uh, there's something going to come up in the, in my next section for the video. So anyway, I'm gonna stop this video and I move on to the to the MacBook, and I'll show you that now. So bear with me and thanks very much. Yeah. See you soon. Good. So I'm recording myself talking. Um, let me take the lights down a bit, makes it better. Good, thank you. Here we are. Okay, so now I've got, uh, so I'm recording the screen. I'm going to add this later on to the video. So hopefully we'll take it from there. So, um, yeah, I've done a lot on this, 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 this front. And you can see that there's a lot of tracing going on, a lot of uh, analysis uh, and a lot of, uh, you know things in the background things that doesn't make sense and a lot of operating system 
dissection and, all, and, and whatnot. But the most interesting part is I've actually developed a tool that I'm talking about. And this is the third stream or the fourth stream. And this is what I have been, well, I spent some time on this. I meant to release this about a two or three weeks ago, but I had no time. I don't think I'll have time to, well, I'm, I, I'm working on it. So anyway, the tool you can see, um, it took me about three or four weeks to write. And uh, as you can see, I wrote it from scratch. Uh, there's a lot of work involved in this and, uh, you know, it does a lot. So it's not meant or it's not aimed. Let me just rephrase that. It's not specifically wrote, written down to do OA or do OMAP or do any, any other stuff. This is a general tool that will pick any file up and break it down to pieces. And uh, in every single function, it will expand the function, add some pointers to it to say, go and tell print it's up to say, I'm being called and come back and then carry on like nothing happened. So if I run this now, uh, I'll just press run. And you'll see in, in, in that some, you know, the screen is being recorded. You'll see here, uh, for example, I'm just gonna take it from the top. So I now picked up on the OMAP NKS4 module and look what my tool does. So it basically reads the, the header. It understands all the header, what it does. It you know takes it to the entry point, the table offset and all that kind of stuff. And then reads the section header table, uh, dissect it and then read the section headers themselves. So the OMAP, uh, sorry, the, yeah, the OMAP has, you know, text and all that kind of section. I mean, so far you probably might have seen this on object dump, which comes with a, as a Linux open source. So, um, what you don't see is, oh, you might see this too also, but I'll, I'll show you what you don't see in a minute. This is where, you know, section zero is where things are being called outside uh, this function. So for example, if you wanted to write an application that says print to the screen, which is using the print K in, 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 in a module, uh, print K is, a, is an operating system function. It's not something you write yourself uh, and it's part of the API. And because it's in section zero, it means it's not handled by the OMAP itself. It's being thrown as an undefined function for another one to execute and, and to come back. By the way, the noise is as my son is playing basketball outside. Sorry, so uh, forgive me for this. Yeah, uh, so now, for example, things like K3, kernel free, RTH3, SDG, whatever. Uh, SDG is, is, because it's not part of OMAP, it's OMAP calls the SDGs to do stuff. But SDG, again, is, is just a relay, there's nothing. It's just, um, you know, SDG register, USB driver, will just do call register drive, USB driver without doing any salt and pepper on it. So that's fine. Um, now, the other sections, for example, like the text, uh, it'll say these are the local sections where sections call themselves up. Uh, for example, you would write a function that would say, uh, what's, uh, you know, add A and B and give me the result in C. And when you call that function, because both of the, of the caller and the callee is actually your own uh, implementation, they are calling themselves up. For example, here, write callback, interrupt callback, that sort of thing. Interrupt callback is an interesting pit I'm actually working on now as we speak. Uh, so these are the local functions. And uh, anyway, the, that stuff so far is something you probably would see on uh, the object dump, which comes in, in, a, in a Linux. Uh, so that's nothing, nothing flat fancy and nothing flashing in there. It's all you know, same old, same old. But it's going to get interesting in a second. There we go. So uh, now, um, there are functions in each file. So this function, when calls the other function, for example, if you'd say, uh, as I said before, a function that's called add, it will take A and B and it'll give you back C. Uh, that does it silently. So it will take the A and B, it'll do A plus B, do the result and then send it back. Here you go, C, uh, you do what you want to see. I'm not gonna say anything about it. What my function does is, uh, or my application does, it before, as the system heads up and goes into the function that says add A and B, 
it'll say actually tell me who's who's talking to you and what they're talking about so it will say for example someone uh, you know function uh, one two three has called me and asked me to add a, and asked me to and gave me parameters a which is five and then b is seven and i'm about to add them together that's it so uh, that's that's good enough information for me to understand where in the program things have broken down and, and, and stopped at the end. That is that's a, a, a very, very good thing to, to, to analyze and to understand. So you're looking at the codes, which is a lot of, you know, hex and stuff. Why is it yellow? Yellow means it's been mapped into a section or basically these are the relocation items. So 55 uh, is push uh, EBX, sorry, push EBP. 89.55 is more BB5, comma uh, SP, and, and, and so on. So there's basically the codes when you disassemble them. Uh, I, can, I can actually understand the codes by not, by just looking at the codes I have it all in my head. Well, most of them in my head to understand, uh, for example, B8 means more VAX, comma, comma, something. Uh, for example, this here, B8, something, something, that is more VAX, comma, 000 uh, a004 but that is addition to whatever relocation being added to so i mean i'm going to take i don't want to do that so it, it's it becomes boring so anyway um moving on so the function i wrote or the system i wrote will take that you know these bytes in here as you can see and break it down and disassemble them so disassemble that, the, this assembly comes up and say, call this OMAP driver and then call this spin lock and then, you know, send the command, this, this information, and then uh, do the spin lock in the IRQ save just to, um, you know, just, to, as I said, the semaphore, it will lock itself up, uh, prevent people from getting in, do the stuff and then unlock itself and then carry on. This is the critical section processing. So, uh, and you can see here that this assembly you may think it's a disassembly, but I actually wrote this disassembly down bit by bit myself. So it's not complete, it's work in progress, but you can see uh, it's disassembling things nicely and I will keep adding to it, to, 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 it, to, to it later on. The reason I'm doing this is because the more I understand about the file, the more uh, implementation or the more things I can do in future. And what that means is, for example, if I have a B9 1000, which means move ECX comma one, because you take those and swap them, becomes one, and and ship them to ECX. If you know um, how Intel works and how the Atom or um, or the uh, let's just call it a a a, a, a risk processor works and you understand the difference within the registers and how this whole thing works, then you can definitely write a equivalent or conversion tool to, to take them from, from Intel and then move it down to the Atom or do uh, or, or any risk processor you like. I know it's, uh, it's easier said than done, but it can be done. And which brings me to the next section. Uh, the, another, the other stream that will come up later on is the 64-bit code. So um, at the moment, you can see that we have a 32-bit, which means 8888, these are 32-bit, to move into ECX. And uh, on the newer section, uh, or the later, or the, or the other bit of the file, if I tell the system to uh, do something with C7 instead of B9, it will change this ECX into RCX, and then that, instead of taking four bit bytes, it'll take eight bytes. But to do that, I have to kind of shift that. So I have to take that bit, add the other four bytes, and then slide the rest of it down, which I'm doing already anyway. But um, because I'm adding my code at the beginning of the function, it's okay and it's safe. But if I add this to the middle of the function, I, know, I need to know exactly what I'm doing. And this is... And this is a bit of a challenge, and it'll take and it'll take a while to, to, to get done. But it it can happen, and it I think it will happen uh, at some point. The um, so this is this is it uh, as you can see, and now every single section is being disassembled. For example, let's say this section, which is the function that says submit NKS4 command multiple write non-blocking, 
it's got these kind of bytes and these kind of codes and it, the, this is what the function does blah 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 and then the next function is clean up omap and ks4 driver and then so on so all these functions being dumped uh, so far uh, you know you're not missing much so if i keep going in here um, at some point i am doing also fixes at the same time so call for example to this one usually when you call something you would call a function a named function if you call just a number and it's not mapped it means you are kind of breaking that rule and sometimes to do with compiler opt optimization so what i'm doing here is kind of taking it back step back and then reformatting the function to make sure that the call is actually happening to a known function so i'm actually doing a manual code injection to here to make sure that this file uh, has everything mapped correctly and when you call a function you don't call a number you would call actually a name like this one here submit all map right and the reason why it's orange is because it's actually been mapped on the uh, uh, uh well the rel or rla section uh in here it's not mapped and it's just you know loose uh, so because that thing is existing in here we need to kind of change that to make sure that we can push things up and down otherwise we can't so uh, just going to move on to the next phase of this whole thing so if i scroll down to yeah i think it's here yeah yeah so here you got for example in here you got the c tours the detours and, and that sort of thing c tours is mean the constructors and this is where a lot of people mess things up when they when they kind of reverse engineer or, or, or do coding. C tors is a is a constructors and the detours is destructors. So all that means is when you when you load up the thing before it calls the uh, do one in it, in it call function to power up the module, it'll actually use the C tors and find out which ones are there and then fires each one uh, to 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 start things before it calls and and, and execute the, the main the main function. So. Um, anyway, uh, I think now after doing this whole thing, uh, you can see now the functions are patched, which means um, when I'm when I'm taking something on, I'm I'm actually uh, modifying something, uh, push it down by a bit, add my code to it to say print this up, tell me what what you're saying, and then carry on do whatever you what you meant to do. So now all these things have been pushed down and that all looks good. Uh, so this is the code I've actually written down and it does it really nicely. So in on the old map, uh, just go, well, you can see, so just so now it, it took about, well, let's just run, run this again. So if I run it one more time, it took, what, two seconds, three seconds maybe? Uh, and that worked absolutely fine. On the OA section, it will take a lot, a lot longer time to, to run. And uh, it's all because OA is a very complicated uh, system and that also has got a lot of protections on it, which means they've broken down all the p codes into loads and loads of sections and to prevent people from really understanding how it works. But to be honest with you, my, my thing should reverse engineer that if, if I want to, absolutely fine. Anyway, the reason I'm showing you this tool is because Rather than sending you an, a, a modified OA file at some point, um, I could send you a tool that says run this and it will patch the file up for you nicely. And uh, on any new release, the tool will be updated also to patch, to do a better patch later on. So I'm, I'm only given my own tool. I'm not uh, giving away any, any updated software uh, that I'm not meant to touch. So th this is... That's the difference. I'm truly trying to keep myself within the the licensing, uh, you know, the, the the good license perspective, and I don't want to kind of breach any copyright rules because, as you can see now, all the work I've done is pretty much on the um, on the operating system itself, which is an open source provided by Korg, and uh, and I think in future videos uh, I will I will probably um may not uh or may may work or may or may do things differently uh i think what is uh sorry that didn't make any sense sorry let me let me rephrase that 
Um, in the future work, rather than focusing my work on just the Kronos now, I think I will probably start working back on the OMAP itself. And I do want to do development on the OMAP, not, not reverse engineer what's, what's in there already. I mean, I can, but I, 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 I think I, I'm going to stop the Kronos soon um, to pick up the OMAP section. So I've done a lot on the Kronos section to, to understand how things work and who's sending what and you know what things are being said. And now I need to start working on the other side to understand that technology better and understand how to make a noise, how to make a voice, how to do what well, I've done in previous videos on lights and stuff. But once I've had the good information on both of them running together, I should be able to either uh, create a better instrument myself or um, un understand uh, or, or even send different patches and, and, and things together. So at the end of the day, I think uh, the stuff I talked about in initially on the first, you know, waking up the dead video uh, that I've done uh, a few months ago, uh, are pretty much coming to life. I think I think I think they 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 they're pretty good. They're pretty done. Uh, I think the next few videos I'm going to come up with will be mostly about uh, Linux itself, and I want to actually. I want to release more information on this tool I actually talked about just now and uh, how a Linux module is completely dissected and how to how to hack a Linux module and, and, and to understand that. I, if any of this is an open source system and it's not owned by anybody. Um, and it's allowed to, to reverse engineer because it's in the license. So anyway, um, it's been a long time since I since I uh, talked about all this and, 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 and did a lot of stuff. Uh, publicly, so hopefully you guys, uh, I didn't, you know, you know, I didn't even get you to sleep by looking to this video. I hope you didn't find this boring. Um, thank you for all for watching the video. Um, there's a lot of there's a, there's a lot of things will come up later on, but right now I've got a uh, <laughs> well, I've got another contract coming up soon, uh, which is about six weeks or maybe eight. I don't know how, how exactly will that, will that take. I hope it's eight weeks or six or less. Uh, I've got a wedding coming up that I need to attend. Um, basically just, uh, well, it's going to be abroad. Um, and uh, so I think the next video is going to be months away, maybe. Or maybe maybe uh, maybe soon. I have, I have no idea. It's just I'm being really busy so far over time. So anyway, thank you all for watching and uh really keep up the good work and hopefully uh we'll uh, we'll come up again uh we'll, we'll come up later on somewhere have a good day talk to you later